Not us in self inserted as the traveler, it was Aether. Let us continue the trial. When last we left off, Mr. Linney acknowledged the new evidence presented by Lady Farina as fact. Therefore, Lady Farina may continue stating her reconstruction of the events. Ugh, that took long enough. Now, blah, blah, blah. this stage, let's revisit that scene from Linny's perspective. Oh, I need to identify loopholes? Aw, oh, shit. Yeah. <laughs> None of his lying. Oh god, here we go. Okay. As the countdown began, he entered the tunnel. When the flatbed trolley passed, he opened the box and got into an altercation with Halsey, which caused the loud thud. Not true. Obviously. He did not realize that this sound could be heard by everyone in the opera house, which is why he claimed earlier that he could not hear the sound. Okay. Finally, he used the vase to knock her out before making her change clothes to prevent others from recognizing her. At this time, Cowell arrived in the tunnel, having heard that strange noise, and caught Linny red-handed. So Linny proceeded to knock him out too before stuffing him into that box. After that was so right. passed the unconscious Halsey to his accomplice through the magic box in the audience stands, before operating the devices such that Cowell's death would be ruled an accident. And there you have it. That's the truth behind what happened. Does the defendant's side have any objections to Lady Farina's description? The key to refuting Lady Farina's oh. order of events. What Rini experienced. What? Well, that's, well, that's nice. Saw. Okay. Uh, oh, God. Um, Linny entered the tunnel as the countdown began. That's true. This loud sound is from... I mean, there's no fight here. I can't use his statement. Um, heard a mysterious voice. Strange sound. Okay, maybe I can't refute that one. Linny knocked Halsey out using the vase and removed it. Was Linny really in the tunnel at the time? All Linny saw was Yeah, so this where's the Yeah, he saw the clothes. But we're looking for evidence to refute that he knocked Cowell out. Hmm. If your refute is wrong, he'll just tell you to try again. So it's got to be... There you go. He did not take part in the underground altercation. He only witnessed traces of the aftermath. Okay. Uh, actions in the tunnel.
Would his statement like be? Yeah. According okay. According to Linny, he left via the vent after entering the tunnel. He couldn't have had that alter. Yes. His action in the tunnel. Entering the tunnel. Lenny knocked out. Oh, blah, 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 blah. It's gotta be, th yeah. Linny went to the room that contains the Oratrice's core. <clears throat> Attention! Ace Detective Paimon has something to say. My thing is, why do I have Aether's voice thinking, but have Paimon say the shit? Like, ah, uh, goddamn. <laughs> Let's not get into this conversation again. I feel like we have this conversation so many times. But he immediately used a vent to access the Opera House basement, which is where the underground core of the Oratrice is stored. Once he reached that area, he heard a voice in what should have been an empty room. Since he knew something was amiss, he returned immediately. The crime scene had already developed by the time he reached the tunnel again. And in order to complete the magic trick, he did not remain there for any length of time. Finally, he reached the surface, and that was when the accident happened from his point of view. Therefore, he's innocent. It's all a bunch of he said, she said at this point. There's no concrete evidence. Thanks. Yes, you dumb bitch. My reasoning? Oh. Oh, uh, which which one do I pick? Oh my god, so many options. Huh? Oh, uh -huh. uh -huh. uh -huh. whatever. Precisely. They have a point. <laughs> that's right, you tell them. And that's why they're partners of mine. They've managed to turn things around. Oh, well, your denial is very strident. I'll give you that. But what proof do you have to back your claims? <laughs> Objection! <laughs> if he had been in the magic box the whole time, how could he have not heard that sound? Would you ask? You're saying that he wasn't? Uh... Uh... So it's one of these three things? It's gotta be the... the sound. Yeah, I think that one was right. Yeah. That's right! Lenny wasn't in the box or in the tunnel! Exactly, That's okay. That's why he didn't hear anything strange during the performance! This means that when the crime happened, Linny had already entered the basement via the vent. The same clue you used to disprove his alibi <laughs> has now become the best proof! <laughs> How do you like that? <laughs> well played. <laughs> to think you'd use such logic. Well then, if it wasn't Linny who committed the crimes, then who was it?
Oh no, I didn't mean to do that. Fuck. What is this? Could there have been a third person? In no. Halsey is the missing person and an ordinary audience member. The deceased's name is Cowell, Linny's assistant. He would. Hmm. There's no way. Halsey is the missing person and an ordinary audience member. Or... Fuck. <laughs> so it's him. The deceased's name is Cap. So he's just dumb as fuck and killed himself in the process. The killer was in fact the nigga that's dead. <laughs> the killer, in fact, committed suicide. Let's just recreate the truth. What Cowell did, and how he went from would-be perpetrator. Thank you, Aether. How can we envis what? As having been unable to interfere with the crime. The deceased's name is Cowell. The sound we heard may have come from altercation in the tunnel. No one entered or left. Linny was not in the tunnel at that moment, which gave our criminal ample time. It would have been tough for both people to fit into that vent. That. Who is the prime suspect currently? Linny was not in the tunnel at that. The deceased's name is Cowell. Linny's assistant. Where did the missing Halsey go? No one entered or left the opera house through its entrances. Fuck. They got three. I got three wrong. <laughs> How can we. Linny is having un been unable to interfere. Linny was not in the tunnel at that. This? How can I prove there was an altercation in the tunnel? The sound we heard may have come from a clash between- So the sound. And then where did they go? Halsey's clothing was in the tunnel. <sighs> it would have been tough for both people. There. What? <laughs> what do you mean? The same thing happened to me. They was like, nah, you just, you just fucked up. Like, they was like, you're just dumb. You're just dumb. What's wrong, Traveler? Are you still having trouble thinking? <laughs> I see. Look, since we're at a dead end, just like the trick as it transpired, the end result must have been utterly different. If only we knew how Halsey does. Well, that would be nice, but the tunnel only has... But it's not like this is a magic trick where you can just make a real live person disappear. You know, like you did from that water tank, Lynette. <laughs> Excuse my interruption. Wait a second. Opponents, but what? do you not see that the crowd is growing impatient? If the defense is unable to make further effective arguments, we will move on to the next stage of the trial. OBJECTION! <laughs> Hold on! I gotta think. Which gave our criminal ample time. The sound we heard may have come from a clash between... Yes. The deceased's name is Cowell. Yes. The vase! The vase was not broken by chance. Lynette escaped from the water.
water tank vanishing gradually and leaving only clues behind. If there's a similar method where a person could be <laughs> oh, Just a moment, please. I do hope you know how preposterous you sound at the moment. How could a person ever be transformed into water? This is reality we're talking about here. Must we really? I should magic tricks are ultimately just illusions and misdirection. But Halsey's disappearance is very real. Even so, I trust the traveler's judgment. The truth must be out there somewhere. Perhaps some new line of reasoning may open if we try to gather all the focal points that don't make sense. Since Cal was the deceased, we haven't placed much attention on him. But given that we aren't making much progress with the case, it wouldn't... <sighs> People really do come up with all sorts of harebrained schemes when at the end of their rope. The way I see it, your suggestion that we broaden the scope of our investigation is nothing but a tactic for stalling the trial. Nevertheless, I believe that this is a reasonable request on the part of an attorney. Since the trial does indeed appear to be at an impasse, I believe that additional evidence may help us make more progress. Guards! Please step into the lounge and examine the personal effects of the deceased, Cowell. News? We are still examining the items, but we have already made critical progress that we feel must be shared with everyone post-haste. We discovered several test tubes of fluid within Cowell's baggage, each labeled separately. The notebook in his backpack claims that these fluids are... water from the primordial sea. The primordial mm -hmm. sea. The note's contents also indicate that Cowell belonged to an organization that sells illegal drugs and that he had an accomplice. Mm. The notebook has many entries concerning safe usage of these fluids, in which the keyword dissolve appears many times. One of these tubes was labeled Opera Epicles, along with yesterday's date. It is empty. The notes also state that these dissolution properties work exclusively on people from Fontaine. It's likely that Halsey was chosen as some sort of test subject. As such, we believe that the defense's hypothesis is, in fact, supported by sufficient evidence. Dun dun! You gotta be kidding! <laughs> you see the drama? This is dramatic as fuck. Actually, be Wait a moment. This reminds me of a certain prophecy. Oh my god, the prophecy! It's just a coincidence, isn't it? Huh. If people can become water. Does that mean that the water tank's real use was as a means to hide water stains? And if Cowell was targeting that girl... Wait just a minute... Could that mean... You two, with me, quick! Demoiselle, wait! What about your partners? Mm, let's go. Just trust me. Order! Order! Oh. <laughs> it is undeniable that further examination of the deceased's personal effects has yielded some surprising results. But we cannot yet verify the veracity of these. Still, let us assume that these clues are indeed authentic, albeit with the understanding that Ms. Halsey had guards. Please continue examining the items along these lines, Mr. Linney. It appears your hypothesis is supported by the evidence, so please continue speaking. Of course. Thank you, Your Honor. If we uphold this hypothesis, I believe that many of this case's seemingly unrelated clues can be connected together. Right! Like the metal hook! That one didn't make sense at all. Hmm. Let's think about this. Cowell's methods must have something to do with that water from the primordial sea. The deceased's name is Cowell. To control the timing of the dissolution? The water from the primordial sea should already have been prepped before Halsey entered the magic box. Now it seems like the hook rope was not meant for another magic trick. The water from the primordial. What item did the culprit use to hide the mechanism behind the crane? Behind the crime? The rope that held the water tank up was lit by the fireworks and st Fuck. Lynette was in the magic box on stage the entire time. Ah! <laughs> Sir, what do you mean it wasn't the box? <laughs> in the inner 
Oh, that box. Okay. Never mind. All right. That makes sense. Whoops. <laughs> Take it away, Paimon. Dumb bitch. Now, it seems like the only point of contention remaining. She gonna get what's coming to her. Circumstances that led to Cal's death. His notes mentioned he had an accomplice who could be related to the situation. On that note, the guards have just contacted me, indicating that they uncovered new evidence. I shall now invite him on stage to share it with us. Tap. Thank you, Your Honor. We were just inspecting the luggage of the other people involved in this case, and we found an identical sample of the water from the Primordial Sea among Linny's personal effects. What? What? That can't be. <laughs> oh, I see. Well, how wonderfully comedic to have your own counterattack only to come back and wound you. Does this not clear all doubt? My dear citizens, my loyal audience, allow me to present my reasoning and bring this performance. Here we go. Linny did not need to take part in the dissolution of the young woman at all. Indeed, he did leave the scene via the vent. Having made modifications to the props beforehand, his accomplice Cowell then caused Halsey to vanish using the water from the primordial sea. But upon his return, in cruel avarice, Linny desired sole credit and prepared to do away with his partner in crime. Ultimately, he knocked Cowell out, and the tool meant to cover the crime up also became a murder weapon. Now, as much as I regret having come to such a viciously straightforward conclusion, it does seem that the famed Fatui is quite the cold-blooded and ruthless organization. Am I right, Mr. Linny? We've used up all the evidence we collected. There's no way for us to make a rebuttal here. Is this the end of the road? Oh, crap. Bam! all seen enough now i believe this is indeed the finale now then my good noble chief justice should we not in your view move huh? excuse me everyone but i must interject what miss i must ask you not to shout <laughs> and to respect the ongoing legal he says shut the oh. fuck up Come on. For interrupting, you know. Now, would anyone here like to take a little break from all this debate and see a little magic? Excuse me? I'll show you an amazing trick, one that can bring a young woman who has disappeared back in the flesh right before your very eyes. Please do the honors, Mr. Linny, if you would be so kind. But what in the world is she saying? No offense, miss, but miracles like that are beyond my scope as a magician. Come on now, don't be silly. Magic is all about misdirection, isn't it? It often conceals the truth while presenting a fascinating illusion. But once everyone believes the illusion, 
Can't magic reveal the truth to them once again? And wouldn't such a trick be the most marvelous finale to today's performance? Come on, Lenny and Lynette. Give it another go. Don't worry. Spina di Rasula has made the necessary arrangements on your behalf. But as the magic makers and stars of the show, I think I should leave the final performance to you. I understand. And voila! Ah. Uh. Um. Uh. Sorry for the interruption. Bitch, what? You was dead. Wait. We saw you die. So the whole thing about people dissolving wasn't true after all. To be clear, I'm only here because this person told me that if I testified, the merit of doing so would lessen my sentence. I was hiding outside this room listening to the proceedings because I was afraid that I would be the one put on trial. I was just feeling happy that no one had noticed me. And then before I knew it, she caught me. <laughs> That'll teach you to underestimate us three. Where should I begin? <sighs> I'm sorry. I knew it! I'm I fucking I'm knew it! I Repeat. Keep how it happened. Why? Firstly, my name isn't Halsey. It's Lillian, and I'm originally from Monster. Monster? I heard that Linny's show was gonna be a real thriller, but I missed the chance to buy a ticket, so I stole one. That's how I make a living. I steal stuff. Oh my God, she's the thief. And I'd never been caught before. But I was noticed at the harbor a few days ago, and I barely got away. Lenny was the one who caught me in the air. Hey! No wonder you look familiar! Lenny even mentioned that you- Well, and I thought that would have been the end of it, but then the number selector chose me. He even mentioned the Fortress of Meripede. That's a prison, isn't it? So you can imagine how shocked I was. I thought he was on to me for sure. So I played along with the show while looking for an opening to flee. But then I got water poured on me for no reason, and then someone jumped into the tunnel to nab me. I wasn't going to take that lying down, so I knocked him out and stuffed him into the box. <sighs> there was nowhere to run from there, though, so I had to change my clothes and hide in a box containing performance costumes. I slipped out after the first guard arrived at the scene and continued hiding inside the opera house. Can a person even hide in there? But I swear, I didn't know that the water tank would fall. Had I known that, I wouldn't have put him in the magic box. I may be a thief. Well, that makes everything pretty clear now, doesn't it? This time, we need to tell the entire story from Lillianne's perspective. Thanks, Aether. Okay. Um... Good lord. Where do I start? So Kyle Plenty is a uh, uh, Halsey up here. Uh, 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 uh. flower vase was not broken to cover anything up, but it was smashed during the struggle between Lillianne and Cowell. was afraid that she would be recognized if she left, so she changed clothes and hid, biding her time. Just what...
the strange sound wasn't from a fight. It was Lillian's attempt to break it. intensified after she entered the tunnel and had water poured on her head. So she kicked the door open, producing the thud we all heard. Hearing the commotion, Cowell leapt into the tunnel, only to discover that Lillianne had not dissolved. He did not know that Lillianne was not from Fontaine, but was a thief who oh. made her way in by stealing a ticket. Mistakenly believing that the water from the primordial sea needed time to take effect, he tried to force Lillian back into the box. The two broke the flower vase during the struggle, but Lillian came out on top, knocking Cowell out and putting him in the box. With no way of escaping, she changed her clothes and hid in the costume trunk until the performance ended. Of course. Oh, how the turntables, Miss Farina. How the turntables. She would have oh. to go through guard inspection if she tried to leave afterward. So, she has been trapped in the opera house these last two days. Two days? We've already become desperately hungry by the time we were chatting over macarons. So, she swiped two of them right under our nose. <gasps> we didn't notice that? Sneaky thief. Well, we must be dumb as fuck not to notice that. Nice. Ah, so that's the whole story. Bravo. Bravo. Oh yeah. Now then, Lady Farina, do you wish to speak against the defense's statements? I oh. Go ahead, bitch. Do um, something. Please answer the question. I want you to. Also, if I may add, the trial has not yet ended. <laughs> As such, she try to leave. The prosecution not <laughs> she was like, I gotta go. Before the proceedings, gotta go. What are you reading my mind now? No, I have no further arguments. I admit defeat. But really, could you at least have left me with some dignity? No! Yeah. Don't let the door hit you on the way out, bitch. <laughs> If there are no objections, then as the Chief Justice of Fontaine, I shall once again repeat the full sequence of events. End it, Nouvellet! The actual perpetrator of the serial disappearances, Cowell, selected his next victim from the audience reservation list. With some modifications to the selector, he could ensure that the pre-selected young woman would be chosen. To cover up any evidence while committing the deed, Cowell thought of allowing the water tank to fall which would conceal the water left behind after the young woman was dissolved. He also tampered with the rope suspending the water tank, using the fireworks at the end of the performance to cause the tank to drop and hide the watermarks. He poured the water from the primordial sea into a balloon during the preparation of the magic box and stuck it to the box's lid. Finally, he passed the prepared hook on a rope through the gap in the magic box's door when bringing the young woman to said box. When the magic trick officially began, the box containing the woman was lowered into the tunnel, tightening the hook rope and bursting the balloon containing the water. If all had gone to plan, the young woman would be dissolved at this time. However, Lillian was not from Fontaine and thus fled the box with a loud noise. Realizing that there was trouble, Cowell entered the tunnel and met Lillian. Thinking that the waters had not yet taken effect, he decided to proceed. However, his opponent was more capable than he thought, and he was overcome, knocked unconscious, and placed into the magic box, and thus became his own final victim. Lillian then changed clothes and hid until the performance ended, before hiding in other parts of the opera house. As for Linny, he was in the underground structures within the opera house, and was thus... He had no idea what the fuck was going on. From this yeah. he was like, what? He was like, what? He dead? Is in fact innocent. <laughs> While there is much in Linny and Lillian's conduct that should still be investigated separately, this case at least... No, for real. Over to the oratories to you fucking for two ass motherfuckers.
All right. Very nice. As such, Linny and Lynette are officially declared not guilty. Great work, partners. Thank you all. Thank you so much. Next, I think we deserve an explanation, Guard Vaughn. How oh. did you find the water from the Primordial Sea in this baggage? Yeah, what's up with that? Your discovery caused me to make a serious mistake, you know. Or was that not a discovery, but false evidence that you dare to bring before this court? Shut up, bitch. I suspect that the accomplice mentioned in Cowell's notes was not Linny, but you, yes? Uh... I'm sure you know what you must do to lessen your sentence. Yes, NPC number 45. You better snitch. <laughs> you better snitch, bitch. We were supposed to place blame for the serial disappearances onto Linny, and thus cause suspicion to fall on the Fatui. The higher ups said this was the best opportunity to do so. And now Who that are the higher ups? And the secrets of the water have been revealed. You have become a liability to said higher ups, yes? Therefore, you would be wise to tell everything you know and seek the protection of the guards. Yes, I'll tell you everything I know. Our boss. Discovered that the water can cause people to dissolve. It can also be made into a potion, which, when extremely diluted, can cause people to experience unforgettable exhilaration. We've hmm. been in this business for a while now and have made decent mora off it. The disappearances were also the boss's idea. I mean, this is the boss we're talking about. The. <gasps> oh. <gasps> And now he can no longer talk. Such ruthlessness. <sighs> I shouldn't have expected any less of them. An outrageous Two deaths? Act. All present, please submit to inspection immediately. In a Genshin game. Two. <gasps> Two. Hold your verse. They have outdone Good themselves. Shit. Good shit. You killed two people That's in your quest. True. Traveler, Paimon, please wait. Oh. The fuck do you want? I know you may not want to speak to me right now. Maybe you don't even want to look at me. But still, let me thank you again for defending me to the end. Even after you learned that I'm a member of the Fatui. I guess. But regardless, <laughs> I'd like the opportunity to set things straight. I didn't oh approach you with any ulterior motives or ill intent. I've spoken to you as myself, just plain Linny, this entire time. As for why I'm a Fatus, it's because the goals of the House of the Hearth align with those of an orphan like me. That's all. That was how Father, who you might know as the Knave, <gasps> was back then too. The Knave? The one who controls the House of the Hearth? She's your father? Wait, the knave is... Is the knave Arlecchino? I was wondering. Would you mind hearing a story? It's about my past. Back oh when our parents my god. Died, Lynette and I were left wandering <laughs> the streets. God. To survive, I took to surreptitiously observing an older street performer who did magic. It took me several days to figure out how he pulled off his amazing tricks. I took my sister through several streets until we found a crowded corner. And we began to perform. To my surprise, we proved to be pretty popular. And we could at least stop worrying about where our next meal would come from. Before long, an aristocrat came to me. So you went from orphans to them. That was how we felt at first, too. As if fate was on our side and we could say goodbye to those painful days. But I gradually discovered that while we were called Fosk, he would constantly take me to all sorts of banquets to garner attention. That doesn't seem too bad either. <laughs> It took a while after one particular performance at a banquet. I discovered that Lynette was not on the same return vehicle as me. I waited a long time after we returned home, but she did not come back. I went to that note. The answer he gave me was, 
She caught the eye of the most eminent person at the banquet, so I sent her over as a gift. I mean, you'll be able to perform your magic regardless of who your assistant. Oh no. So, huh. but what if Fontaine's laws deal with such? As far as outsiders are concerned, this is a relationship akin to adoption or foster care. And they have their ways of escaping the... I managed to ferret out the location of the mansion of that so-called eminent person and hurried through the night. But by the time I leaped over the walls, avoided the guards, and all I saw was the moonlit ground covered in blood. And the knave standing there in the darkness. So... she already... That's right. She had rescued my sister before she could come to any harm, and had even discovered several girls hidden in a basement. All of them orphans. Father, I mean, the knave, might have seen something in me, and so she made me an offer. The House of the Hearth welcomes you, for your interests align with ours. Here, none will ever betray you. Indeed, betrayal... I was hesitant to trust her. I mean, I had just been betrayed by nobles. But she was also quick to destroy the noble who had taken us in at first, giving us back our freedom. So that's how the two of you joined the House of the Hearth. She has her own plan. She has gained permission from the Saritza to first use the Gnosis's power once she obtains it. She plans to use it to find a way to break the prophecy and save Fontaine. So she believes in that? That's right. The whole House of the Hearth is currently working to combat that crisis. Today's case has also proven that people from Fontaine can indeed dissolve into some sort of water, thus further supporting the prophecy. All of us house members here, Lady Arlecchino herself included, Arlecchino. are from Fontaine. Okay. We won't give up on defending our homeland. To us orphans, the only connection we have left to this world, apart from our family, is our homeland. So, from small deeds like distributing magic pockets, to huge schemes like stealing a Gnosis, everything is aimed at dealing with that prophecy. It's alright, I understand. The only thing I can do is relate all this to you. I just hope you can understand that even as a member of the house, I have never stopped making my own decisions, and that I believe what I'm doing is right. If you should need anything at all in the future, feel free to find me. I will do my best to help you, as plain Linny. That was done, yo. He... He's done, bro. He's done. So let's recap real quick. Lynette got sold off. She got trafficked. <laughs> Lynette got sold off. She got trafficked. Linny and Lynette are part of the Fatui. Not only are they part of the fucking Fatui, they answer to Arlecchino. Literally, their adopted parent. Even the wind cannot blow on forever. Where do the, I the, like what? People are dissolving. That, <laughs> yo, the fact that Genshin added like human trafficking in in this game is crazy. People are dissolving. A man became water in front of everybody. Oh my god, the quest isn't over yet. <laughs> Three hours and 23 minutes. Oh, I told you! <laughs> hey there! This was with the disappearing act you pulled right as the trial ended. Oh. Are you looking for us, Navi? Shut up, stupid, sexy Navia. I do feel that we're getting closer to solving the serial disappearances case, though. Don't you think so, too? Huh? What's wrong, my dear partner? I'm not about to help you with this. Crack a case that's been cold for, and given that there's new evidence. Uh, I see. Oh. Oh. I'm a little sure. Oh. You, but I suppose you are just tra sorry. I might have been too presumptuous. Don't say that, Navia. Oh, and we were having so much fun investigating with you too. Oh. Wow. Traveler, what's on. going on? Come on now. <laughs> Causing new hope to spring forth and the reflection in the murk to become clearer. 
Sorry about that. I'm a bit prone to nostalgia. Don't mind me. Wait, shall we have a farewell meal? You know, to commemorate our time as partners? Huh? Do we really... Well, I'd just like to have a proper ending to every important memory. That way there are no regrets later. Anyway, it would just be a meal, so it shouldn't take up too... You don't have to twist Pion's arm if Boss Navi is treating Kim Pun... Oh, wonderful. In that case, why don't we return... All right, then. Let's have our farewell meal. This sounds like a setup. Ah. Yeah. Yeah. I see. So, and the next part starts immediately. So, it's, what is it, 2 a.m.? Through Johnny. I kind of want to be there for the second half for this to see your reaction to I, 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 I just tell it like you're doing this tonight. I'm not doing this tonight. There's no fucking I'm about to way. say, it's 2.20. I'm not going to, like, if I do this tonight, like, I, kill me now. It'll be, it'll be 5.30 by the time you're ready to go to sleep. Wow. That was, uh, that was certainly something. Oh, thoughts? This is just the first part. That quest was fucking amazing. Right? And, like, nothing happened. Well, a lot happened, but nothing happened at the same Game time. Gameplay-wise, nothing happened. And it was still good as hell. That was a great fucking quest. Um, that's writing. That's good writing. Yeah, that's amazing writing. Holy shit. Uh, wow. Wow. Plot twists. Mm -hmm. Who done it? Yep. CSI Miami. Law and Order. All right. <laughs> Fucking bro. SVU, bro. I mean, I wasn't expecting her to be alive. Still, honestly, I thought she was done up. Can we can we talk about the fact that they're trying to get the player more comfortable with the idea that the Fatui. Maybe they're not the bad guys. They're not the bad guys, right? She said the Fatui, the Harbingers all have their own agendas. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And Child just wants to fight people, but ultimately he wants to he's doing shit for his family. Yep. Clearly Arla Arlachino. Um that's how I say it, right? Arla, Arla, Arla. I think it was Arlachino. Arla, Arlachino. Yeah. She is trying to help the people of Fontaine. Yeah, and obviously she also cares about kidnapped girls in the in the basement of a noble. Yeah, I mean she yeah. has like she uh, they were talking that she has like an orphanage, like straight up, <laughs> like she just has an orphanage. Dude, look, how can somebody like that be a part of an evil organization? Your word. So like how you know. I mean, the Fatui isn't all that it seems. And I would be completely for this being, like, if we don't get anything out of Fontaine, I... at the very least, let's get some more light shed on the Fatui. Because clearly the Fatui are up to something that we have no fucking clue about. We don't have the slightest idea as to what the fuck the Fatui are doing. And if... If we can't if, find out about our sister, we can't find out about fucking what N Nahida knows, because Lord yeah. knows we're never going to find out about that, at yep. least tell us what the fuck is going on with the Fatui and over in Shnej fucking Naya. At, at, at the minimum. We, like, we at least... That. That was a dope quest, though. Right? Yeah. Right? That was sick. What were you going to say? Wait till you do part two. Um, yeah. Uh, um, I was going to say, if the Fatui have their own agenda in terms of taking down the gods, assuming that's their goal. Yeah. Because that's, that's the safest spec speculation for now. Right. So that, and if Illumin and the Abyss are also trying to take down the gods... Why are they not working together? Well, there was... Oh, my God. And we're going back fucking... 
<laughs> we're going way back. Wasn't there a time at one point where it was thought that they could be working together, but then it was like it's that they just like their paths like never crossed or something like that, or their goals like never aligned. Ooh. It's not that they were like at ends, but they were just like the Fatui didn't really care about the abyss. Okay. okay. Like I think that's what it ended up being. Because remember, the whole like motive for the abyss is what happened to Conria. Right. The motive for the Fatui, we technically don't know what the fucking motive for the Fatui is yet. Like we yeah. know they just they they're just against the gods. Yeah. So I don't know, man. I don't know. That's uh, I still got a whole quest to go, and then we still got what? What is it? Two more patches after this, right? Four point one and four point two. Um, maybe Are they might be... just do four point one. Oh, they might, because they put two X. Hopefully, oh. hopefully they do four point two also. Yeah, it could be six X. Yeah, you know that'd, what I'm that'd be nice. But I guess we will. Uh, we'll find that out in the next video. <laughs> Cause this video is long enough. I'm gonna, have to, I'm gonna have to split this up. There's no way I'm uploading a fucking three hours and thirty minutes video to yeah. YouTube. I'm gonna have to split this into two videos. Um, but anyways, guys, uh, thank you all very much for joining us on this lovely adventure uh, for the first quest of Fontaine. Uh, join us next time when we go into the second quest. Uh, Lord knows what awaits us in that act. Um, that video should be coming out in the next couple days after this one comes out because I'm definitely going to be doing this probably tomorrow night. So keep an, keep an eye out for that. Uh, and as always, guys, if you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Check out the other videos that we have on the channel. And we'll catch you all in the next one. Take care, everyone.